Hello to all. Today we are going to study about the salivary glands and the composition of the saliva. As you know very well that digestive system is equal to alimentary canal plus digestive glands. And we have to discuss in this chapter the various type of the glands, say for the gastric glands, intestinal glands, salivary glands, okay, and the liver and the pancreas. Now, these salivary glands actually are exocrine in nature. These salivary glands are exocrine in nature. And we must know that exocrine glands are the glands which have ducts which do not open in the blood. They open outside. Okay. So they are opening in the buccal cavity. They are opening in the buccal cavity. And, and as the name is indicating that salivary glands will definitely secrete saliva. Salivary glands will secrete saliva. When food is crushed with the help of the teeth, it is masticated with the help of the teeth and when it is mixed up with the saliva, when mixed up with the saliva, when masticated food is mixed up with the saliva, then the form of the food, form of the food in the buccal cavity is called as bolus that you know very well. In my previous video, I have discussed about the bolus. Form of the food in the buccal cavity is called as the bolus. Now, because of because of the various components found in the uh, saliva, the pH of our buccal cavity or the pH of our saliva is 6.8. The pH of the saliva is 6.8 and it is slightly acidic. It is slightly acidic means it is near to, it is near to neutral pH okay now daily secretion in a human being the daily secretion of the saliva in the mouth cavity is about 1 to 1.5 liters it is about 1 to 1.5 liters and remember one thing that saliva secretion saliva secretion is controlled by ANS that is autonomic nervous system you know very well that there are three types of the nervous system central nervous system peripheral nervous system and autonomic nervous system what i want to say here that the secretion of the saliva is under the control of the autonomic nervous system and you must know this thing that autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts one is known as the parasympathetic uh, nervous system and another is the sympathetic nervous system okay now the parasympathetic nerves the parasympathetic parasympathetic nerves coming from parasympathetic nervous system stimulate saliva secretion remember this thing always remember that ans autonomic nervous system is of two types parasympathetic and sympathetic what i want to say that parasympathetic nerves always stimulates saliva secretion right and the sympathetic nerves and the sympathetic nerves inhibit saliva secretion okay so saliva secretion is uh, stimulated by parasympathetic nerves and the uh, saliva secretion is inhibited by sympathetic nerves one more thing salivation is stimulated by seventh and ninth cranial nerves remember this thing salivation is stimulated by 7th and 9th cranial nerves, 7th and 9th cranial nerves, okay, you know very well that in human beings there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves, okay, Uta, Fagvaha, when we study the uh, cranial nerves, okay, so there are 12 pairs of the cranial nerves, salivation is stimulated by 7th and 9th cranial nerves, remember this thing, salivation is stimulated by 7th and 9th cranial nerves, okay, now, how many types of the salivary glands? How many types of the salivary glands? How many types of the salivary glands are found in the mouth cavity of the human beings? So always remember that human beings have three pairs of the salivary gland. How many pairs? Three pairs. Sublingual salivary gland, parotid gland, and submaxillary gland. Okay. Now sublingual salivary gland is the smallest salivary gland. Is the smallest salivary gland out of the three pairs of the salivary gland it is the smallest and as the name is indicating sub means below lingual means tongue 
means this type of the salivary gland is found below the tongue and its duct is called as we know very well that salivary glands are exocrine and they have ducts so its duct is called as duct of rivenous its duct is called as duct of rivenous this duct of rivenous is also called as the bartholin's duct it is also called as bartholin's duct or duct of rivenous and the duct and this duct opens on the ventral surface of the tongue this duct open on the ventral surface of the tongue fine now this was the smallest salivary gland now coming to the largest salivary gland now coming to the largest salivary gland and that is known as the parotid gland okay one more thing sublingual salivary gland secretes a very very small quantity of the saliva okay now parotid gland is present below the ear that is the auditory capsule it is present below and front of the ear means here at below portion of the uh, that is the e ear what is present parotid gland is present now sometimes this parotid gland swells sometimes this parotid gland swells and it causes mumps if you have heard about and mumps is a viral infection mumps is a virus infection which virus causes swelling of the parotid gland paramyxovirus okay again i am repeating sometimes the para parotid gland gets infected by a paramyxovirus because of which the parotid gland swells and mumps are caused and mumps are caused okay now they are located below the ear their duct is called a stinson's duct again they are also exocrine so their duct is called a stinson's duct and it secretes 20 to 25 percent of the saliva it secretes 20 to 25 percent of saliva and the duct opens in vestibule of the upper jaw this duct means the stinson's duct of the parotid gland opens in the vestibule of the upper jaw means it opens in the buccal vestibule it opens in the buccal vestibule fine now coming to submaxillary gland this submaxillary gland is also called as submandibular gland and this submaxillary gland or the submandibular gland are located at the junction of are located at the junction of lower and upper jaw and the duct of the submaxillary gland is called as the Wharton's duct and this Wharton's duct is called as the largest salivary duct don't be confused largest salivary gland is parotid gland but out of the three duct of Rivenous and Stinson's duct and Wharton's duct the biggest salivary duct or the largest salivary duct is the Wharton's duct and some axillary gland is a medium sized gland so sublingual is smallest parotid gland is largest and some axillary is medium sized gland and these duct open in lower jaw this duct open in lower jaw just behind the incisor teeth just behind the we have incisor teeth in front so just behind the incisor teeth in the lower jaw which duct opens what ducts open which is the duct of sub maxillary gland okay now maximum saliva is secreted by these glands how much percentage 70 to 75 percent so if the question is asked that maximum saliva is secreted by sub maxillary gland 75 percent 25 percent is secreted by parotid gland and rest of very small commentary of the saliva is secreted by the sublingual salivary gland fine so these are the three pairs of the salivary gland found in the humans but it's not necessary that all the organisms will be having the same number of the pairs of the salivary glands say for in rabbit rabbit is also a mammal but in rabbit out of the uh, that is the three pairs they are having these three pairs sublingual they are having parotid they are having some axillary they are having but they are having the extra salivary gland known as the infraorbital gland known as the infraorbital gland as the name is indicating it is present below the eye orbit so we will say that in rabbit instead of three pairs four pairs of the salivary glands are present but in cat very important cat is not having three pairs cat is not having four pairs cat is having five pairs means three pairs sublingual parotid submaxillary and infraorbital and one additional gland more which is known as the molar gland which is called as the molar gland so cat is having five pairs of salivary gland and uh, the rabbit is having four pairs of the salivary gland and very very important one that in frog that is amphibian frog the salivary glands are totally absent okay now let's come to the composition of the saliva which is very very important one 
and you must know because in books you will be not getting the proper information or the proper content so please watch here composition of the saliva water is 99.5 percent maximum quantity of the water saliva is maximum it is composed of the water mucus mucus consists of the mucus the sticky substance you can also call it as mucin that sticky substance saliva is sticky in nature it is just and just because of the mucopolysaccharide it is just because of the mucopolysaccharide plus the glycoproteins and this uh, uh, mucus protects the lining of the buccal cavity it protects the lining of the buccal cavity now in our saliva a starch digesting enzyme is present very very important a starch digesting enzyme is present known as styline it is also called as salivary amylase it can also be called it as alpha amylase and it initiates the carbohydrate digestion in your oral cavity in your oral cavity it is concerned with the digestion of carbohydrate i can say that it is a starch splitting enzyme if, if you might have heard about that 30 percent of the carbohydrate is digested in our buccal cavity because of this salivary amylase enzyme or the alpha amylase or the tylene and when starch is splitted by this enzyme then two products are formed one is a disaccharide sugar known as the maltose and another is the limit dextrin and because of which the food in the buccal cavity becomes sweeter just because of a disaccharide known as the maltose now there is a, another enzyme found in the saliva known as the lysozyme very very important you must know that this enzyme is antibacterial antibacterial and it dissolves the wall of it dissolves the wall of gram positive bacteria it dissolves the wall of gram positive bacteria and in our saliva also thiocyanate ions are present also thiocyanate ions are present we can say that lysozyme and thiocyanate found in our saliva kills the bacteria or i can say they check the growth of the bacteria in our buccal bucco pharyngeal cavity not only this our saliva also contains certain ions such as sodium ions potassium ions chloride ions magnesium ions and calcium ions okay and our saliva also cons consists of a specific type of the antibody known as the iga you might have heard about that antibodies are five types iga d e g and m five types out of that if somebody ask you that which antibody is found in your saliva you will say iga type now the question arises that majority of this tylene that is the star digesting enzyme is secreted by which salivary gland so majority of the tylene secreted by parotid gland okay and remember that thing that this tylene or the salivary amylase is activated by the action of the chloride ions not only this in your uh, saliva certain salts are present like bicarbonates bicarbonates are actually meant for removing the acidity of the food okay one more thing which was asked in the aims examination that where is lactoferrin found and what is its role lactoferrin in generally you will not get this point in your books lactoferrin is actually antibacterial okay and it is found in the saliva urea and uric acid also are found in the saliva but in very very little quantity and there is one more enzyme uh, present in our saliva which is inactive which is non functional and that is known as the lingual lipase that is known as the lingual lipase fine so this is all about the composition of the saliva and this saliva is very very important for many purposes such as saliva consists of the mucus and mucus is a sticky in nature so it lubricates the food so that the food uh, is easily shifted towards the esophagus and then to the stomach it helps in digestion of course salivary amylase enzyme is present and it is a starch splitting enzyme so definitely it will be helping in the digestion and the saliva is also antibacterial you have seen lysozyme thiocyanate okay and uh, these uh, lactoferrins all are antibacterial it also helps in speech it, it also helps in swallowing it also helps in taste and etc many points are there okay so saliva is having an important function so in today's video we have discussed about the composition of the saliva and the different types of the three pairs of the salivary gland okay in the next upcoming videos we'll be dealing with the liver and the pancreas and the intestinal glands okay so thanks a lot for watching me